Hey guys, so if you're new here or if you're not, if you want to hear me voice act, head over to our main channel, links down below. And if you don't, this channel's solely for TTS. Um, if you want to know all the details about what's going on, we have a stream up that you can go and watch, but let's just get into the video. Lizard Folk 5. Looks like we're going to be partaking in some guerrilla warfare. This ought to be fun. Be me, Lizard DM. Be not me, Lizard Folk Ranger. Lizard Folk Fighter, Lizard Folk Barbarian, Lizard Folk Cleric, Lizard Folk Sorcerer. Having just escaped Farin by fleeing into a drowned forest, the party is item-less and being pursued. Ranger hides behind a tree until rest of group can swim over. Eventually, Barbarian arrives too. Fighter, they are going to follow us. Barbarian, not Farin, the sun is rising, there aren't enough leaves to shield him. Fighter. Fleshies can follow us though. Barbarian grins. Fleshies are in our territory now. If they follow us, they will die. Ranger asks me if he can use his primeval awareness. We're using revised Ranger, UA. He ducks his head underneath the water and stays there for about a minute. I tell him that there are six human guards approaching from the north, about one kilometer away. He relays this info to the party, also informing them that there might be other, non-human guards that he can't find. Sorcerer, Cleric, and I have magic, but you guys don't have weapons. How are we going to win? Barbarian gives another grin. We'll have weapons so long as we can just take out one of them. Ranger gives a smile. Well, it looks like we're going to be partaking in some guerrilla warfare. This ought to be fun. Party spend next few minutes formulating plan while they wait for guards to catch up. They hear the guards long before they see them. Stepping through waste, and sometimes neck height water, they can't help but make noise as they go through the forest. Most guards have opted to use spears and crossbows, as they aren't confident in their ability to fight with swords in water. Party splits up from the tree, several sliding underwater as they depart. Sorcerer looks at me. I'd like to cast shape water, but use a third level spell slot to enhance it. Fuck it. JPG. As guards are wading waist deep in water, they feel the temperature suddenly cool around them, becoming painfully cold in a span of seconds. The water begins to turn to ice around them, and the guards scramble to climb a tree in time. As most of them climb trees, one guard tries to climb, only to feel a hand grab his leg. The barbarian pulls him under, beginning to drag him away. Rest of guards can't see anything under the ice anymore. Barbarian asks how long guard can hold his breath. I tell him two minutes. Barbarian frowns and shakes his head. That's too long. I think I'll change that. Barbarian punches guard in the diaphragm. Guard can't help but lose his breath. Roll a strength save. Ten in total. Barbarian can't hold on as the guard tries to swim for the surface. Barbarian smiles. I let him go. He can't get through the ice. Sure enough, the guard can't. He fails two strength checks before he succumbs to a horrible, slow death, and his struggles finally stop. Barbarian nods approval before dragging the body away. Meanwhile on the surface, Rest of party slinks away, the cleric using thaumaturgy to surround the area near the guards with sounds of people splashing through the water. Party regroups several hundred meters away, and using a sharpened stone, begin flaying the body. Pretty soon, party has a decent supply of human meat, about 24 curved, rib daggers and a mace made from the skull connected to a femur. Gujard. JPG. Fighter looks at some of his bone daggers. Are there any large branches I could break off around here? Rolls perception. 6. He finds one, but as he goes to break it off, he snaps the branch in half, emitting a loud noise. Party cringes. They would hear that, we must move. As party begins to move, they hear the sounds of guards approaching. Party about to go into water when tiefling guard grabs cleric. Barbarian turns back and grabs guard in a choke. Let go red fleshy. You die. Tiefling gives out a strangled cry of warning for his fellow guards as cleric proceeds to shank him repeatedly with a sharpened rib. Barbarian dumps body of tiefling just as guards approach. 
Barbarian takes a shot from a crossbow and Cleric takes two before they slink away into the water. As they're escaping, crossbow bolts being shot into the water. Cleric takes another shot and starts bleeding profusely. Blood trail in water starting to reveal his position. Sorcerer comes out of water. Casts fog cloud. Guards can't see shit as party swim away. Even so, Sorcerer takes a lucky shot to the shoulder before he gets back underwater. Party regroup about 2 kilometers away. Cleric begins healing. Burns through 3 spell slots. Suggests a short rest to recover HP because he doesn't want to use too many slots. Party disagrees. Think that guards will catch them if they take a short rest. Fighter looks at me again. What about now? Any branches around? Rolls perception. 2. Cleric, taking pity, says he wants to help look. Fighter arouse. 14. Sees a nice branch. One issue. It's very high in a tree. Fighter gives me biggest glare. I want to climb the tree. Rolls athletics. 16. Using his tail to wrap around the trunk like a rope, Fighter begins climbing. As he climbs, I roll a chant d20. As he puts his hand on another branch, it suddenly snaps. Rolls dex save. 5. Rolls acrobatics as he falls. 10. Fighter manages to get his feet under him as he hits the water. There were roots under the water. He hits them, taking 2d6 bludgeoning damage. Cleric burns another spell slot to heal him. Barbarian, I will get the stick for him. Rolls athletics. 19. As he climbs, I roll a d20. The tree begins groaning a lot as he gets near the branch. Barbarian stops. Looks at fighter. Just how badly do you want this stick? Just get me the F king stick already. Barbarian sighs and climbs up a little. He grabs the branch and rips it from the trunk. As he does so, a voice cries out in the distance. Barbarian looks over, sees guards pointing up at him. Guard lifts crossbow. I let go of the tree. MFW. Barbarian drops a good 40 feet out of the tree. Rolls acrobatics check. 1. Barbarian breaks his foot as he lands on the roots. Cleric burns 5th spell slot to heal him. Barbarian shoves stick into fighter's hands before walking off. Party moves deeper into drowned forest. At next meetup position, party finally agree to take a short rest. Ranger agrees to keep watch. After expending a few hit die, party looking better. Fighter finally completes what he wanted the stick for. He holds up his new spear, a stick with three of the rib daggers protruding from the top, bound together by the guard's belt and a few pieces of torn clothes. Barbarian does some bargaining with me, and we decide that his skull weapon is more of a mace than a club, and that it should use the appropriate hit die. As party finally begin to move off, they notice the sun begin to get lower in the sky, nearing the horizon. Party gives each other a look of shared concern. Ranger, it might cost us a level of exhaustion, but I suggest we continue through the night. We aren't equipped to fight him again. Cleric, he could still catch up to us. We'll have to fight him anyway. Fighter, we could set a trap. We could hit him with so much before he even knows we're there. Sorcerer thinks for a moment. If he figures out what we're doing though, we're in trouble. If he catches one of us by ourselves, we're dead. Ranger shakes his head. He wants us alive. It's why he caught us. Barbarian. Guard sure shot us with a lot of crossbow bolts for people who want us alive. Cleric. We can't go on the assumption he'll let us live. We have to fight like we're going to die. Ranger. And if it goes wrong? No one answers. Party begins to set up their trap as the sun slowly drifts over the horizon, veiling the forest in darkness. Be me, Lizard DM. Be not me, Lizard Folk Ranger, Lizard Folk Fighter, Lizard Folk Barbarian, Lizard Folk Cleric, Lizard Folk Sorcerer. As night falls, the party sets up their trap for Farin. The Cleric, with only 4 spell slots, has 2 first levels, 1 second and 1 third. As they're setting up their trap, the ranger uses his primeval awareness to look for any other guards. He notes a trio approaching and warns the rest of the party. 
Barbarian desperately wants a better weapon, so he creeps closer to try hit first. Barbarian and fighter sit waiting behind trees for about 15 minutes, but no one comes. Confused and on edge, party finishes off final preparations for their trap and waits. About 3 hours pass in silence as the party wait for any sign Ferrin might be close. Ranger periodically uses primeval awareness. Never finds anything. The sun is gone, and the moon has begun its ascent. Shadows lurch from every tree, making a horrible visage of confusing darkness. Sorcerer holds a stick in his hand, looking around in the darkness intently. Suddenly, in the distance, he sees a movement. Rolls perception. 10. A flash through the trees, little more than a blur. Without another second, he snaps the stick. The sound is deafening in the silence of the forest. The blur stops, and he sees a shadow, indistinct amongst the others in the distance. It begins moving again, slowly. Creeping towards them. Sorcerer tries to slink back into the water as silently as possible. Rolls stealth. 15. The water makes the tiniest of sounds as he retreats into it, leaving only his eyes above the surface. The shadow detaches itself from the surrounding trees, and Farron steps into a patch of moonlight, hardly making a sound despite standing in knee-deep water. He peers around, looking for movement and listening for sound. And then the cleric hits the ground in front of him with daylight. Farron is instantly blinded as the area fills with 60 feet of bright light. The ranger peels away from a tree, throwing two rib daggers before returning to his hiding spot. One dagger embeds itself in his thigh and Farin roars, even as the barbarian emerges from the water behind him. The barbarian swings his bone mace, slamming the skull against the back of Farin's head. After throwing a bone dagger that goes wide, the fighter jumps in, stabbing forward with his newly made spear, catching Farin in the stomach. The sorcerer hits with a lightning bolt, and without his eyes, Farin had no chance to dodge it before he's struck. The wound in his stomach begins to heal, even as he blinks the light out of his eyes. Immediately, Farin swings his sword, cutting open a large wound in the barbarian's chest. He swings again, and the fighter barely manages to deflect the strike. The cleric runs in, summoning a spiritual weapon, a shining, bone and stone maul. He swings it at Farin but the sword quickly manages to block the hit. The ranger throws two more daggers. 16. Nat 1. The first dagger leaves a dent in Farin's armor, little more and the second dagger flies past his head, opening up a scratch on the barbarian's face. The barbarian rages and swings his mace three times. Two are easily deflected, but the third slams into Farin's kneecap, breaking it immediately. Farin stumbles to his knee, making him an easy target for the spear that stabbed him in the chest. The sorcerer launched magic missile at him, opening up a massive hole in Farin's back. Farin jumps up and grabs the barbarian, biting him in the neck. Farin's kneecap heals up and so does a lot of his back wound. Barbarian fails safe, hit points reduced by damage. Cleric heals him up with cure wounds before swinging again with the maul. Farin ducks under the blow. The ranger, seeing Farin's exposed back, runs in, a dagger in each hand. He stabs both into Farin's back, using the hole the magic missile blasted in his armor. The barbarian tries to swing his mace. First swing, miss. Second swing, miss. Third swing, nat 1. As he swings his mace, Farin turns, swinging his sword. The mace takes the hit, and with a crack, is cleaved in half. Fighter stabs Farin in the thigh and tries to go for his head, but Farin manages to duck out of the way. Sorcerer launches another lightning bolt at him. Farin passes the safe, but still takes a heap of lightning damage. He turns around and brings sword down on Ranger with a two-handed strike. Nat 20. Rolls damage. Full damage. Deep cut from shoulder to hip opens Ranger up, black vapor spewing out. Farin promptly slices open the cleric's arm. He's looking poor, but still far from death. Cleric dives past Farin, barely avoiding an opportunity attack and uses his last spell slot to cast Cure Wounds. Meanwhile, his maul takes a swing at Farin, catching him in the side of the face. Farin spits out some teeth. 
Ranger gets to his feet. Now that his innards aren't in danger of being on the floor and launches a kick at the back of Farin's leg. Farin stumbles but doesn't fall. Barbarian shoves Farin. And after already being off balance, he falls. Die dead fleshy. Barbarian screams as he jumps on top. Farin raises an arm, taking the bite that would have torn out his throat on the forearm. Fighter stabs Farin, digging it deep into his stomach. The spear breaks and the fighter shrugs. Jumps on top and sinks his teeth into Farin's shoulder. Farin lets out a yell of pain and tries squirming out of the two lizard folks jaws. The sorcerer uses Misty Step to close the distance, and, like his friends, sinks his teeth in. Farin's yells turn into panic screams. Get off you savages. His wounds desperately try to close themselves up, even as chunks of his flesh are torn off. He goes to stand up, but with the combined weight of three lizard folk, can't. He desperately tries to swing his sword at the barbarian. Nat 20. Barbarian yells as the sword cuts out his eye. Cleric replaces Barbarian. We tell you. You know when. Holds Farin's head back by the hair and proceeds to close his jaws around Farin's neck. Farin's screams become horrific gurgles before they're abruptly cut off as the cleric rips out his throat. Farin goes limp and his eyes glaze over. Fighter grabs his sword and uses it to carve into his body. Party proceed to skin and devour Farin. After a long rest, Cleric tries to heal Barbarian's eye. The skin closes over, but the eye isn't restored. Barbarian shrugs and asks Fighter for the sword. Fighter passes him the sword and Barbarian proceeds to cut out a piece of Farin's armor. Using a piece of Farin's clothing, Barbarian makes himself a makeshift, metal eye patch. Game ends. Be me, Lizard DM. Be not me, Lizard Folk Ranger. Lizard folk fighter, lizard folk barbarian, lizard folk cleric, lizard folk sorcerer. Now level 6, we started at 5. Party makes their way back to the carriages. Sun is up now and Farin's remains are stored happily in the party's stomachs. As they approach the carriage, barbarian calls for everyone to slow down and approach with caution. Sure enough, guards are still there, waiting for Farin to return. Sorcerer launches Firebolt at one of them as the rest of the party jumps into action. Firebolt misses, scaring a lead horse. It begins to bolt. Guards take one look at party, and seeing fighter wielding Farin's sword, get their own horses to start moving. Ranger desperately throws a dagger at the guards, but it falls short. Guards and carriages ride off. Party look at trail. One way could lead back to Mildenburg. Other would lead them to the carriage eventually. Party begins debate as to the best course of action. Barbarian decides for them by insisting that his sword was a gift from his village chief, and he refuses to leave without it. Party agrees to follow the cards. After three days of travel, Party fully aware that they likely won't catch up but being persistent. Crest a hill and see a massive city ahead of them. Immediately duck down so people on walls can't see them. Ranger asks if he would recognize the city. Rolls straight d20. 14. He's never been inside, but he knows its reputation. Zanamit, the Sunshine City. The city is renowned for its extravagant parties, full of the rich and noble. It is also renowned for its expansive black market, where one could find just about anything they desire. Party contemplate disguises but end up deciding against them on the basis that word of them might not have spread this far. Party enters animate, getting odd looks from the guards at the gate as they enter. As soon as they enter, they realize they have no chance of finding the carts. The streets are absolutely packed with humans, half-elves, dwarfs, gnomes and humanoids of every variety. Ranger casts locate item on the sword. Immediately gets a ping. Party begins heading off in the direction of the sword, pushing through crowds and attracting a lot of weird looks. End up taking several side streets and alleyways. End up in a more disheveled part of the city, well away from the public eye and main streets. As they walk, they see more shady appearing figures around them, casting them looks of suspicion and intrigue party keep following sword signal. End up at small market in a quiet corner of the city. Party notices people standing in strategic positions, 
looking out. Immediately stand out as they approach. As they walk in, they hear a small word of thanks, and a young, robe-wearing man steps away from a stand. He has the sword in his hand. He begins to walk away. Barbarian immediately steps forward. As he gets closer, a pair interject themselves between him and a man. Both adorned in intricately designed armor, one, a male elf, has a spear, while the other, a female human, wields a wicked looking scythe. Barbarian takes a step back as the two step forward. Move fleshies. I get sword. Woman shakes her head slowly. Back up lizardman. If you go for the sword, all you'll feel is this scythe in your chest. Rest of party nears. Fighter drops hand to sword. It rests in a simple scabbard on Farin's belt. Woman's eyes narrow as she sees the sword, and her grip on the scythe tightens. Barbarian lets out a low growl. The woman gives him a small, unimpressed smile. Party notices her teeth. Pointed. Immediately more on edge. Just before it looks like there's going to be a brawl, a young half-orc steps in. Whoa there. Let's just calm down, shall we? I'm sure this is all a misunderstanding. Elf gives a long groan. What do you want Tiber? This is all a misunderstanding. These guys are new to town, they're with me. Friends of my old man on the eastern coast. Elf raises an eyebrow and casts an eye over the party. They're with you? He asks, clearly unconvinced. Tiber gives a winning smile. Yep. Help defend his boats from pirates. Don't you? Ranger nods slowly. We defend boat. Tiber raises his arms in a I told you so sort of gesture. Woman's eyes narrow but she relaxes slightly. Get your friends out of here. I don't want to see them again. Of course Milana, you won't be seeing them again. With that, Milana and Elf walk off, following behind the man wielding barbarian sword. Tiber turns and wipes a bead of sweat from his head. Better watch yourselves. Those grim the knights are bad business. Fighter points at the pair, looking as the knights walk through a patch of sunlight. They vampire. Why no burn? Tiber shrugs. Something to do with the magic casters in the city. Highwater ordered them to cast protective charms on those two. Magic shit. I don't really understand it. Barbarian stares at pair. Have sword. Tiber shrugs. They'll deliver it to some rich fella, probably Wisman. He likes collecting weird shit. Is mine. Tell that to Wisman. It's his now. Barbarian grabs Tiber by the collar and pulls him close. Get sword back. Tiber's eyes go wide, and he scrambles away as the barbarian lets him go. Jeez man, show some restraint. Who would want to help you with that sort of attitude? Ranger steps forward. He's sorry. He just the very stressed. Tiber raises an eyebrow. Why does this sword mean so much to him? It gift chief. Reiniite. Tiber gestures to disappearing figures of the two Grim the Knights and the man. Well, they'll be heading to Wisman. You'll have a hard time getting to him. Besides his parties, he could just as easily not exist for all we see of him. Fighter, what a party? Tiber facipums. Oh boy, you really are screwed aren't you? Ranger, you help us. Tiber raises an eyebrow. I help you? We pay. Tiber gives a small smile. You got money? Ranger thinks for a moment. Money on cart. Tiber suddenly looks at the fighter and gets a glimpse in his eye. The sword. I'll help you if you give me the sword. Fighter immediately puts hand on it. Tiber smiles. No sword, no help. Ranger shakes his head. We find way in. Tiber shrugs. Suit yourself. Party walk away to try find some place to sleep for the night. After sleeping rough, party contemplate what to do. Fighter likes his new sword but also realizes that money is necessary. Party decide to hold off selling the sword until they really need to. Begin exploring city, trying to find their bearings. Party end up discovering massive houses, likely the homes of barons and rich people. Lizard folk briefly visit a few stores before leaving because they don't have money. Spend most of day trying to figure out how to get the sword back. Finally get an idea as they walk through the streets. 
A frail, old silver dragonborn passes them, carrying books and moving slowly. The party stare at him as they pass, as only the ranger was aware of dragonborn's existence. Sorcerer runs up to him and begins speaking in draconic. Which clan are you from? He immediately asks. Dragonborn turns to him slowly. What's that, young man? Sees party. Ooh, green dragonborn. My eyes are failing me, but I would recognize your kind at any time. Sorcerer frowns. We're lizard folk. What's a dragonborn? Are you sure, young man? You look distinctly draconic to me. I'm a lizard folk. From the swamp. From the swamp hut. You know, I've heard there are lots of weird races in there. Best be careful. Us dragonborn have to stick together. I am a lizard folk. That's very interesting, young man. Unfortunately, I'm quite busy. Have to get ready for Wisman's party tonight. It's supposed to be extravagant. He looks at sorcerer and smiles. I do hope to see you there. I would love to continue our conversation further. Walks away. Party gets their idea. Ranger proceeds to steal some clothes from a nearby store. 18 sleight of hand check. He brings them back to the group and they proceed to put on clothes in an alleyway. Hide their daggers under clothes. Fighter decides to carry sword in his hands. As night falls, the party sees one of the houses light up and music ring out into the city. Decide to walk over, shoddy disguises in place and a whole lot of desperate hope. MFW lizard folk are going into a high end party disguised as dragonborn in order to steal their sword back. MFW next session is going to be very interesting. Be me, lizard DM. Be not me, lizard folk ranger, lizard folk sorcerer, lizard folk cleric, lizard folk fighter, lizard folk barbarian. Party readying themselves to enter Wistman's estate. After talking with a silver dragonborn, the party has planned to disguise themselves as green dragonborns. Use minor illusion to make the sword appear like a cane after seeing some people use them. How could this go wrong? As the night draws closer, the Wisman estate has lit up and music is blaring through the street. Party, in as much of a disguise as they can muster, finally decide to approach the building. The doors are guarded by a bulky half-fork and rough-looking human. Massive line stretching away from door. People in line all wearing very fancy clothing. Lizard folk in stolen clothes stand out like a sore thumb. As they approach the line, Barbarian tries to skip it. Ranger grabs his arm and yanks him into line. Half-elven woman in beautiful white and gold dress turns to them and gives them the look down. You're an interesting bunch aren't you? Who are you wearing? Cleric frowns at her. We have clothes though. Woman gives very forced laugh. Oh and funny too. Cleric is very confused. Woman gives him a smile. So, who invited you? I was invited by Wistman himself. We've been friends for years. Lizard folk nod blankly. Woman lifts up a small white letter, pulling it open. Her thumb conveniently obscuring the name of the inviter, she shows them. Line keeps moving as sorcerer eyes the letter carefully before she obscures it. Woman ends up at front of line. Flashes guards a smile and her invite. They let her in. Party walk up. Guards take one look at them and raise their hand to stop them. Invites. Ranger up looks around table. We did not think this far, did we? Sorcerer gives a cocky smile. He steps forward and holds out an invite. Guard looks at him, genuinely surprised. Looks at invite for a second. UHH. Come in sirs. Enjoy your night. Party enters the building. Sorcerer. Breasted agitation baby. Go to love it. Immediately assaulted by sound and light. There's about 200 people in the front foyer alone, all in elegant suits and dresses. Party realize just how out of place they truly are. Barbarian questions Party about consequences of hundreds of witnesses. Fighter brings up the suggestion of scaring off all the guests, but Sorcerer reminds him that that will just bring the attention of the guards, or even worse, the Grimner Knights. Party decide that the safer option is subtlety. Their speciality of course. Ranger casts locate item on the sword, getting a ping immediately. 
Lizard folk begin making their way through the party, drawing looks from several people as they pass. A waiter walks up to them, bearing a tray covered in small delicacies. Finger food? He asks. Barbarian frowns. Those not finger. Waiter looks very flustered. Ah, of course sir. I'll uhh, be right on it. Quickly leaves. Barbarian turns to cleric. Stupid fleshy doesn't know what fingers are. Continue making their way through the party. As they climb a few stairs, they come across a ballroom. Ballroom is full of dancing party goers. Of course they are doing a sophisticated slow dance. Lizard folk look on at the display with extreme confusion. Barbarian, where is the sword? Ranger, other side. Barbarian nods and begins marching across the ballroom. Shoves past several people. Pushes between man and woman. Woman looks at him and grabs him, moving into a dancing position. Barbarian's eyes go wide as she grabs him, and he tries to push her away. She thinks it's a dance. Man interjects himself again, casting a glare at the barbarian before dancing with the woman. Barbarian reaches other side just as rest of party walk around. Barbarian, fleshies are so weird. Party unanimously agrees. Proceed to walk towards the sword. They enter what essentially is a private gallery of prized art and items in glass cases. A few guests walk around, admiring the art and talking in hushed tones. A woman looks at a painting of a face on a blank canvas while a gnome beside her admires it too. I think it represents the fear of man in a confusing world. The blank canvas represents the uncertainty and doubt that we face every day. Gnome blinks for a moment before frowning. I think he just forgot to paint a background to be honest. Both have an intense discussion about it before moving to the next exhibition. Barbarian points out the painting to the ranger. What purpose does it serve? Ranger shrugs. It doesn't. Fleshies just like to look at them. Barbarian shakes his head. Waste of space. Party looks through the cases to find the sword, passing small statues, vases and jewelry. They finally come across a large glass case. Sword is inside. Silver Dragonborn is admiring it. Offok. JPG. Sorcerer steps forward and Dragonborn turns around. Oh hello there, young man. I was hoping to see you here. Dragonborn gestures to sword. Interesting piece isn't it? I've been trying to figure out what it's made of. Sorcerer looks at it. Sorcerer looks at Dragonborn. Bone. Oh how intriguing. From what creature? Long pause. Dragon. Dragonborn takes long pause before letting out a small, oh. Sorcerer, is there any way we can take it out and look at it? You'd have to ask the man himself. Last I saw, he was by the bar. Sorcerer thanks Dragonborn and recites information to party. Barbarian takes long glance at it before they leave to find the bar. Wisman isn't hard to locate. A tall high elf, he's dressed in an elegant suit and surrounded by guests. Party wait until he's alone, a process that takes the better part of an hour. Party elect Ranger to speak to him. Ranger walks up, mustering all the charm he can. Hello. Wistman turns to look at him. Why hello. I don't believe I've seen you around before. I foreign. Ah, of course. Well. My name is Daity Wisman. I'm the host of all of this. Is party nice? Yes. I do believe it is. Ranger confused for a second but pushes on. Saw sword. Can look? Well of course you can look at it. Every one of my pieces is on display for that reason. Can take it out. Rolls persuasion. 17. Wisman pauses. Sure, why not? I will have to accompany you however. I don't want anyone making off with it. Party begins to walk back upstairs, led by Wisman. Wisman holds his hand against the glass for a moment and with a blue glow, a sigil lights up. A small click sounds and he removes the case, carefully placing it on the ground. Carefully, he passes it to the ranger. Ranger, okay. I want to pass it to Sorcerer, and in Draconic, I want to tell him to make a copy of it. Sorcerer, if he touches it he'll know it's an illusion. Cleric, and what if he speaks Draconic? 
Ranger, then get ready to run like all hell. Ranger passes sword to sorcerer and says a quick sentence in draconic. Sorcerer rolls sleight of hand. 15. Party on edge of their seats as Ranger casts silent image, making a replica of the sword. At the same time he casts minor illusion on the real sword to make it appear like another cane. Sorcerer passes illusion sword back to Ranger. Ranger smiles at Wisman and goes to place the illusion back in place. Wisman holds out his hands, oh, I'll do that. Ranger, no, is pleasure. Rolls persuasion. 18. Party let out sigh of relief as Ranger puts the sword on the pedestal. Wisman replaces the case. It locks. Ranger thanks him and party go to leave. As they reach the staircase, they see a familiar face at the bottom. Milana begins climbing the stairs towards them, wearing a beautiful red dress. Party tries to walk past her, keeping their eyes down. She looks up. Barbarian looks up. They meet eyes. She recognizes him. She looks at Sorcerer's cane. She knows it's an illusion. Her mouth opens in a wide grin. I don't think you're supposed to have that are you? Barbarian panics. Grabs the sword off Sorcerer. Swings it at Milana. It cuts open her arm and she gives him a smile, even as the wound closes over. Now why did you have to go do something like that? She grabs his arm. He tries to break out. HFW she's stronger than him. With another small smile, she throws him behind her. Barbarian goes off the side of the stairs. Falls about 20 feet and crashes through a table. Music stops as people scream. Jigs up. Ranger pulls a dagger from under his shirt and stabs. Nat 20. He jams it into her eye. She gives a scream of pain and backs off. Party begins to run. She pulls the dagger out of her eye and gives chase. Party shoves through people to get to the door. Barbarian clothes on their heels. They reach the door and sprint out. Guards at door don't get a moment to react before Milana sprints out after them. Party run away into the night, Milana letting out a laugh of wicked joy as she pursues. Altogether, things are going better than expected. No tabletop RPG is complete without beautiful models on the table and the best place to get models is from us. If you check the link below we have everything you could need for your magical realm. Only the finest of big titty wafers here. But if you're not into models or don't play with models we got you covered with subclasses such as the Gachimashi Wizards, the Simp Warlock and the North FC Fighter. Also we have started selling 5th edition adventures with our first one featuring Belle Delphine, the succubus that has poisoned the town's well and turned the villagers into simps. If any of that stuff sounds fun to you go ahead and check the link below but let's get back to the video. Be me, Lizard DM. Be not me, Lizard Folk Ranger, Lizard Folk Sorcerer, Lizard Folk Cleric, Lizard Folk Fighter, Lizard Folk Barbarian. Group fleeing Wistman's party. Being pursued by Milana. Oh boy. JPG. Having abandoned her heels, she's just as fast as them, if not faster. Party realize they won't lose her by just running. Sorcerer casts fog cloud behind them. She runs straight through it without so much as slowing down. Has new idea. Runs next to some crates. Pushes them over and casts silent image to make it appear as if there are several more crates. Idea is that she won't know which ones are real. His grin drops when she simply vaults over them, only gaining more ground. Ranger throws two daggers back at her. Both go wide because of disadvantage. Only lets her get closer. Party panicking now. Sorcerer looks at me. How close behind is she? Around 10 meters, close to 30 ft. If I turn around and cast a spell, will she catch me? Depends how long you take. Sorcerer gives out long shuddering breath. Player is actually really stressed. Okay. I turn and cast Maximilian's Earthen Grasp. Milana's demented smile widens as Sorcerer turns. She reaches out to him, teeth bared. A stone hand reaches up from the ground and tries to grab her leg. Strength check. 3. Party hears a horrible cracking sound as Milana's shin absolutely shatters from the sudden stop. She lets out a horrible scream and collapses to the ground. 
party sprint away, congratulating themselves on a good job. Then a sphere embeds itself in a wall next to them. Party barely get to blink before a sphere of force erupts from it. Mass strength saves. Ranger, fighter and cleric are thrown back 10 feet into a small vendor. Barbarian and sorcerer manage to keep their footing but still are pushed 10 feet back. Everyone takes 9 damage. Party momentum stops immediately. Barbarian watches a spear detaches itself from the wall and flies up. Looks up. Sees the male Grim the Knight staring down at them from the roof of a building. With a groan of pain, Milana removes herself from the stone hand, now that the sorcerer's concentration is broken. Her leg begins to reform with a horrible series of cracks. Okami and Graves. Let me have this one. They were so close to being mine. Graves gives a small smirk. Yes, I can see that. Milana gives him puppy dog eyes. It's a disturbing sight given the context. Graves smiles. Oh go ahead. Have your fun. Milana beams, her pointed teeth bearing. Oh Milana. She looks up at him again. He tosses down an object, and with a dull thump, she catches it in her hand. The scythe. Do be quick. All the screaming from last time was really getting annoying. Milana sulks. But I want to find out if these guys scream too, she whines. Party slowly begin backing away. Grave snaps his head towards them. I do hope you aren't planning on leaving. I'm so interested to find out how it is you killed Hillborn. Barbarian holds sword in front of him. Ate him. Eat you too. Graves gives a small laugh. Oh how very much like you. Go ahead Milana. Have your fun. Milana steps forward, smiling wickedly and swinging her scythe back and forth in slow arcs. Ranger leans over to Barbarian. We won't win. We need to run. Barbarian. We beat Farin. There's two of them and we only barely beat Farin. Get me a distraction. I'll slow down crazy fleshy. You run. Ranger goes to say something, but Barbarian stops him. Lizard folk no fear death. Ranger nods slowly. Sorcerer looks at Barbarian. You ready? Barbarian nods. Sorcerer casts blindness deafness at third level. Graves fails the save. Milana doesn't. Barbarian runs forward, swinging his sword in a massive overhead swing. Milana deflects it easily and gives an insane laugh. Finally. Rest of party begins running away even as Graves stumbles on the rooftop, trying to clear his vision. Barbarian rages and swings two more times. Milana blocks the first but hisses as the second cuts open her leg. The cut heals and she swings her scythe. Barbarian barely blocks it in time. She swings again, and Barbarian manages to jump back before going on the attack again. Rest of party sprint away, leaving Barbarian to give them time. Barbarian cuts open Milana's arm and swings again, hitting her in the chest with a lightning powered strike. Her hair stands on end as she is electrocuted and after the pain subsides she gives another laugh. Barbarian realizes just how much shit he got himself into. Mine has tricks too she tells him. The blade of the scythe glows red hot. Barbarian realizes even more how much shit he got himself into. Graves blindness wears off and after taking a glance at the fight below him, begins running after the rest of the party. Milana swings the scythe at him and Barbarian groans as the blade opens a cut on his leg and immediately cauterizes it. She rolls again. Nat 20. Barbarian goes to deflect a swing, only to realize at the last second it was a feint. Blade hits him under the ribs, burning into his chest. MFW does 50 damage total. Barbarian crumples to his knees, scythe blade embedded inside him. Milana looks him in the eye and twists it. Barbarian, I don't scream. This bitch isn't getting any satisfaction out of me. Milana gives a nod. Tough son of a bitch. I respect that. Lizard folk no fear death. Milana smiles. Good. With that, she removes the scythe, and with another swing, decapitates him. Barbarian's body crumples to the floor. Sword hits the ground. Rest of party running through streets. Can hear the distant sound of the fight. Hear it go silent. Accepts solemnly that he lost. 
begin hearing the sound of footsteps on tiles. Look up. See graves in the distance, looking for them. Duck into side alley. Grave stops right above them. Ranger feels someone grab his arm. Turns, drawing dagger silently. Tiber's eyes go wide. He puts finger to lips and gestures to an open door behind him. Ranger beckons everyone in. Graves hears a sound and sprints off. Game ends. Be me, Lizard DM. Be not me, Lizard Folk Ranger, Lizard Folk Fighter, Lizard Folk Cleric and Lizard Folk Sorcerer. Rip Lizard Folk Barbarian. Party quickly gather into room as Tiber closes door behind him. Are you insane? Do you actually want to die? Tiber runs his hand through his hair and groans. What kind of idiot fights a grim the night after dark? Especially those two. Ranger, you say no burn. Yeah, they don't burn during the day, but they don't heal either. They're cowards during the day. They only fight when they think they'll win. We kill day. No. You'll be better off leaving. If you don't, they'll get at least one of you. He looks around and pauses. Unless they already have. Fighter, he stay behind. Help escape. How noble of him. Well, if you're smart, you'll get out of Zanimate now. There's nothing for you here. Tiber groans and looks at them with a hint of sadness. You can stay here tonight. I'll give you a place to sleep. Party accepts. As Tiber starts to cook dinner for them, Cleric goes into another room. After making sure no one follows him, he pulls out a small leaf from a satchel on his side and chews it. My lord. Give me the knowledge I seek to know. A few seconds pass before a feeling of wind brushes his face. The sounds of birds chirping echo around him and the smell of the forest fills the room. Just as quickly as it came, the sensations disappear again. Cleric nods and looks at me. I'd like to cast spiritual weapon. His bone maul appears in the air in front of him. After a few seconds, it starts to shift and change. Finally, it stops shifting and the bone sword rests in front of him. It blinks out of existence. Cleric takes out another leaf and chews it. My lord. Please send us help. We fight for the sake of all lizard folk. We cannot fail. Help us. There is no response. Cleric nods and leaves room. Party's face when. Cleric returns to table in time to enjoy a hot meal. Tiber sits down next to everyone, a salad in front of him. Party stare at him extremely weirdly. He shrugs. I'm vegetarian. Fighter, that's dumb. Fleshy no eat plant. Tiber smiles. This fleshy does. He holds out a carrot. Care to try? Sorcerer leans forward and grabs it. He sniffs it for a moment before biting. Carrot pieces spray the table. Sorcerer drops it. No good. He looks at it for a moment before offering it back to Tiber. Tiber reluctantly takes it, but understandably doesn't eat the mutilated vegetable. Party goes to sleep after dinner, vowing to make a plan in the morning. As they wake, they immediately convene around the table. As they talk, Tiber strums a small lute in the corner, humming a tune to himself. Ranger, we shouldn't leave the city. They'll expect us to leave immediately. Fighter, alternatively, they may expect us to take revenge and come for them. If that's the case, they'll be on guard during the day, when they can't heal. Cleric, we could lure them into a trap like with Farin. Sorcerer, that probably won't work twice. If they see one of us, they'll assume the rest are waiting. We only got Farin because he thought he was catching us by surprise. Cleric suddenly looks over at Tiber. Should we be talking in front of him? We don't know his motives and he might speak draconic. Asks to roll inside on Tiber. 7. You don't know if he can understand draconic but if he does he's not showing it. Or he might not understand it at all and you're being overly paranoid. Cleric raises eyebrow at me. I give him a small smile and wave for him to continue their discussion. Cleric turns to rest of party. Either, DM, is fking with us or Tiber's sus. Then again, I failed my insight. Basically, I have no clue. Ranger, go on the assumption he can understand us then. Party agrees on this. 
They discuss for several more minutes before they're interrupted by a horrible twanging sound. They turn as Tiber curses. A string on his lute broke. He looks up, seeing the room is now silent. Sorry. Do continue. I'll just need to drop into the market to get some horse hair. Fighter looks at him. That weird. Tiber frowns. Don't you guys eat people? Fighter shrugs and turns back. Cleric turns to Tiber. Is there church? Yeah, but they won't help you. Only interested in money, and as I've noticed, you don't have any. Party pauses, trying to figure out if he went through their bags or he's talking about yesterday's conversation. Fighter, hey DM, I'm going to check if Farin's sword is still in my bag. Gets up from table and walks away. It's still there. Fighter looks at sword. Grabs it and brings it out of the room. He places it on the table and looks at the sorcerer. Can you do an arcana check on this? I want to know what it does. It'll take an hour. We've got time. Fighter looks at me and raises an eyebrow. We do have time don't we? I give him a smile but say nothing. Sorcerer rolls arcana check. 15. He spends an hour looking at it. I pass him a little note. He looks at it and nods. It's called midnight. Just swarming with necrotic energy. This isn't in nice sword. In actual stats. 1d8 slashing plus 2d6 necrotic. 3 charges. Expend a charge to cast darkness. Gives wield a hell sight. Fighter size. Cool, but not super effective against undead. Ranger shrugs. We beat Farin with little more than bones. Any weapon is better than no weapon. Tiber about to leave for market. Sorcerer decides last minute he wants to come. Disguises himself as tiefling from last time. Tiber and Sorcerer leave for market. Tiber leads him to small knickknack store first to buy some horse hair. Go to butcher next, pick up some meat. Sorcerer asks Tiber to buy a whole deer. Understandably, butcher doesn't sell a whole deer, and if they did, Tiber doesn't have the money to waste on it. Slightly disappointed, they move on. As they're walking around, Sorcerer sees Jeweler. More importantly, sees Large Diamond. Oh no. JPG. He walks over and gives woman horrible smile. Can buy diamond? 300 GP. Sorcerer shakes head. You lie. Fake diamond. Woman stands up. Are you suggesting what I think you are suggesting, buddy? Sorcerer leans in real close. Fake. She pulls out a heavy crossbow and hands him the diamond. There. Feel how real it is. Try anything and I'll splatter your brains across the opposite stall. Sorcerer nods, feeling weight. I want to slide it into my sleeve and cast prestidigitation. Rolls sleight of hand. 19. Woman doesn't notice the switch. He hands fake to her. She takes it and places it on the counter. Gonna buy it? Sorcerer shakes his head. No money. Woman snorts. FCK off then. Sorcerer returns to Tiber. I need to learn how to do that he comments. Sorcerer frowns. Tiber saw what happened. Immediately sus. We go home now. Tiber nods. To go to return home. And bump into Melona. She snarls and backs up, raising her scythe. Then she sees Tiber. Hello Melona. Tiber. She looks at the sorcerer. Another friend of yours? She gives an extremely wide grin. I really did like your other ones. Sorcerer notices her hands. Hands covered by gloves made from scales. Tiber steps between them before sorcerer can do anything. Have you got anything to say or can we just go? Milana returns her attention to him. As she does, her hand lingers for a moment in front of sorcerer's mouth. Sorcerer, inside check. 18. Sees her looking at him from the corner of her eye. She's baiting him. Sorcerer doesn't bite, figuratively and literally. She takes hand away. You wouldn't happen to know where your other friends are? I would oh so very much like to meet them again. Tiber nods, keeping his composure. Try the fish market. They like to visit there when they come here. Milana nods. I'll do just that. Enjoy your day Tiber. She looks at the sorcerer. Pleasure meeting you. 
She extends a hand. Sorcerer doesn't take it, knowing she'll see through the illusion if she grabs it. She raises an eyebrow at him. Someone's rude. Manners will get you far in life. You ought to learn some. Sorcerer doesn't say a word. She grins and walks off. Tiber and Sorcerer return home. Cleric expresses an interest in visiting the church while the fighter wants to go out and find weapons. Tiber agrees to take them tomorrow. Ranger asks me if there are any birds nearby. One perception check later he sees a pigeon sitting on the windowsill next door. I want to quietly open the window and use speak with animals to get it to come over. Pigeon obliges. Coos softly and bounces into his hand. He tells it to wait there while he quickly ducks inside. All but crashes into Tiber. Need cloth. Tiber blinks for a second before looking in a drawer. He pulls out a piece of tanned leather. Will this do? He asks. Ranger nods and takes it, running back to the pigeon. Creates good berry. After popping one into his mouth, he bursts another with his fingers. Begins writing a letter on the leather and draconic with his finger. After that berry runs out of juice he proceeds to do the same to the rest of the berries until he has none left. Message done. He feeds the pigeon a bit of squashed berry before giving it the note. Pigeon coos and takes it in its claws. Flies east out of the city, headed to the swamp. Game ends early because fighter and cleric had to leave. Be me, lizard DM. Be not me, lizard folk ranger, lizard folk cleric, lizard folk sorcerer, lizard folk fighter. Party preparing to venture into Xanima to retrieve more supplies so they can fight the Grimna Knights. Sorcerer gives cleric stolen diamond. Just in case. Ranger wants to go out, but tells party not to leave. Asks Tiber to leave to buy a disguise kit. Tiber begins packing up to leave. Fighter grabs his shoulder. Why help? Tiber looks at him and shrugs. I help you, you help me later. Favors are worth more than money in this world. He pauses for a moment. Money would be nice though. If you come into money, mind tossing some my way? Fighter nods. Tiber about to leave. Ranger goes to Sorcerer and whispers to him. Wait 30 seconds after he leaves and follow him. I want to see what he does when he thinks we're not around. Sorcerer agrees. Tiber leaves. 30 seconds later, Sorcerer disguises himself as a tabaxi and leaves. Sorcerer begins following Tiber through the streets. Sees Tiber go up to some stores, make small talk with store owners. Buys a disguise kit. Sorcerer content with trusting Tiber when he sees something that intrigues him. Tiber sees elven woman with large bag. Tiber slings loot off shoulder and walks over to her, playing a small tune. Sorcerer can't hear words, but Tiber seems to be singing to her. Elf's face relatively stern and dismissive. Tiber strums the loot a little harder and his voice gets a bit louder. Elf turns to him, paying him more attention. A smile comes across her face. She sits there, just listening for a while as he finishes the song. When he's done, she reaches into bag and pulls out a coin purse. Drops several gold coins into his hand. Tiber pockets them and walks away. Sorcerer intrigued to say the least. As Sorcerer trails some more, he hears an argument from his side. He turns, seeing a group of filthy young men yelling and getting in the face of someone. Sorcerer looks closer. Sees victim. Graves. Graves seems unfazed by the yelling and aggressive actions. He talks back to the men calmly. Men yell at him, and one pushes Graves. Graves almost seems to sigh, and then his spear flashes forward, pinning the offending man's foot to the ground. The man screams as Graves leans in close and whispers something to the man. The man's eyes go wide and he starts shaking. Graves removes the spear and walks away. None of the men follow. Sorcerer turns back to look at Tiber. Tiber's gone. Rolls perception. 8. Scanning the crowd, he can't find him. Sorcerer reluctantly goes to return home when he bumps into a small figure. Oil. Watch where you're going pal or I'm going to mess you up so bad your mum ain't gonna recognize ya. Sorcerer looks down. See small cloaked figure. Seems gnomish. Go away fleshy. Gnome recoils. Fleshy? Fleshy? Who you callin fleshy ya furry piece of shit? 
Gnome pushes him. As Gnome pushes him, Sorcerer's disguise flickers. Gnome backs up. Gets weird grin and looks past Sorcerer. Sees Graves. Gnome holds out his hand. Cash or I'll see if Graves wants to talk to you. No fleshy. Chameleon Lizardman. I know you've got stuff. Sorcerer looks around him. Are there any witnesses? There are some, but they might not notice. I'd like to use sleep at third level. Gnome opens his mouth to speak. Sorcerer hits him with sleep. Gnome drops like a ton of bricks. As Gnome hits ground, body shifts. Gnome becomes green and becomes scrawnier. Is Goblin. Sorcerer picks up Goblin. Party laughing their asses off. What now? I-U-H-H. Uh, uh, I'm going to take him home. Party loses their shit even more. As Sorcerer begins walking away, passing Dwarf frowns at him. Sorcerer tries to think fast. He trip. Dwarf pauses. On what? Bird. Ranger actually can't breathe at this point he's laughing so hard. Sorcerer rolls deception with disadvantage. 10. Dwarf raises an eyebrow and steps forward. I think you should put him down, sir. Sorcerer panics. I want to use sleep at second level on the dwarf. Dwarf drops. Party all but dying. Sorcerer hears voice yell out. Turns. Sees guards marching over. Offok. Oh, JPG. Sorcerer starts running. Guards give chase. Sorcerer twins invisibility. He and Goblin go invisible. Guards yell orders to split up. Sorcerer thinks he's succeeded in escaping. He turns back to face where he is going. Sees Graves. He stops immediately. Graves walks towards him, eyes slowly moving around. Graves getting closer and closer. Sorcerer backs up slowly and leans against wall. Graves looks directly at him. Sorcerer stops breathing. Graves eyes pass over him and he begins walking away. Sorcerer begins to slowly creep away. Stealth check. 5. Kicks over a bucket. Graves whirls around and throws his spear. The spear flies directly past Sorcerer's face and embeds itself in a wall. Spear unleashes fear of force. Sorcerer barely out of range. Spear flies past him and returns to Graves hand. Sorcerer creeps away with a successful stealth check. Makes his way back to the house. He opens the door, forgetting he's invisible. Party draw weapons, looking for enemy. Sorcerer drops invisibility. Party relaxes. Sorcerer looks over a table. Sees Tiber tied to a chair in the corner of the room. Tiber's eyes are full of fury. Sorcerer, what happened? Ranger, he came back without you. We waited for a bit, but you didn't show up. So you tied him up? He would have run. Sorcerer shrugs and dumps Goblin on the floor. Fighter walks over and nudges him. Food? He threatened to hand me into graves. I had to stop him somehow. So you brought him here? Sorcerer shrugs. Ranger looks over at Fighter. Grab more rope. Party proceed to tie up Goblin. Sorcerer takes away the sleep effect. Goblin wakes up. Sees himself in a room full of lizard folk. And then I ask barbarian player to join the table. Party losing their shit even more as they realize they kidnapped a PC. Why you work graves? Wah, what? Fighter slaps him. Why you work graves? I don't work for him. No lie small fleshy. You work graves. Goblin frowns at them. Not small fleshy. I'm a goblin. Party looks at each other. Fighter looks at him. Green fleshy. Goblin. Small, green fleshy work graves. Goblin shakes his head. For the last time. A. I don't work for the f***ing Grimner Knights. B. I'm a f***ing goblin. Fighter pauses. You gobby. Whole table loses their shit. Context. Gobby is Australian slang for blowjob. Goblin goes red. I don't want to be Gobby. Just let me go. Fighter slaps him. Who work for? Right single quotation mark. Tiber makes some muffled sounds. Fighter turns and slaps him too. Quiet fleshy. We talk to Gobby. Goblin sighs. I don't work for anyone. 
I'm just trying to make my way in the world. If that means a bit of underhanded shit, I'll do it. But I can assure you. I would never work with Grim the Knights unless it meant gutting those bastards in their sleep. Ranger leans in. Why no like Grim the Knight? Goblin sniffs. None of your business. We've all got our reasons, don't we? Ranger, I roll insight on him. 17. He sees something in the goblin's eyes. It's not something he himself is familiar with, but he's seen it in others. The goblin mourns. He's seen a horrible tragedy. We kill Grim the Knight. Goblin shakes his head. Don't try it. The bastards are almost impossible to kill. You'll die. We kill one before. Goblin frowns. How? Fighter gives horrible smile. Ate him. Goblin pauses. You, you ate him? Fighter holds up sword. This is. He hurt us. We eat him. Goblin pauses before giving a small laugh. That's the best F King thing I've ever heard. Please. What did his face look like when he realized what you were doing? Ranger, scared. Goblin gives a grin. Now that's something I'd like to see. Ranger looks at him and holds out hand. We let you. Help us. We eat more together. Goblin looks down at the rope. I'd shake your hand, but I'm kind of tied up right now. If you wouldn't mind. Party releases Goblin. Goblin rubs his arms a bit and then holds out his hand. So what do you call yourselves? Party look around at each other. Ranger, we no have name. Party hears Tiber mumbling from the side. Sorcerer reaches over and removes the makeshift gag the others had stuffed in his mouth. Are you done yet? I'd rather not spend my day tied to a F king chair. I bought what you wanted. Let me go. Ranger looks at him. Looks at Sorcerer. Put the gag back in. He's whining. Sorcerer puts the gag back in. And then party here and knock at the door. Tiber. Would you care to open the door please? The voice is immediately recognizable. Milana. Be not me. Lizard folk ranger. Lizard folk cleric. Lizard folk fighter. Lizard folk sorcerer. Goblin rogue. Voice at door is unmistakably Milana. Sorcerer makes sure gag in Tiber's mouth is secure before backing up. Fighter points to the door and mocks swinging. Mouths the word ambush. Party nod and make their way over to stand beside the door. Rogue slinks in the shadows in the corner of the room, separating himself from the rest of the party. Oh Tiber. Please don't make me wait out here. I'm getting impatient. Party stay silent. Tiber, if you don't open this door I'll have to break it down, and that would just be rude. Ranger grabs a knife from the kitchen and tosses it to the rogue before grabbing one for himself. Milana sighs from behind the door. You disappoint me Tiber. And here I was expecting so much from you. Suddenly, the head of a spear slams through the door, stopping inches in front of the fighter's eyes. Fighter yells at everyone to move. Too late. Everyone but Rogue gets thrown across the room as a sphere of force erupts from the spear. The door explodes into pieces. Ranger gets on his feet. Sees Milana standing just outside the broken doorway. Care to invite me in? Suddenly, Ranger feels rope loop around his neck and tighten. Strength save. 6. Ranger lets out a strangle choke as Tiber tightens his makeshift garrote and pulls him off his feet. Fighter gets to his feet and sees Tiber choking Ranger. Raises midnight. Tiber notices. Help. Fighter barely gets a second to turn before Milana pounces on him, swinging her scythe like a maniac. Sorcerer launches firebolt at Milana, barely missing her. Turns and sees Graves enter the building. Offok. JPG. Sees rogues link out of the shadows behind Graves and paws in the doorway. Sorcerer thinks he's going to run. Rogue appears to change his mind. Brings knife down into the small of Graves back. Grave lets out a yell of pain and fury. Cleric runs forward, summoning magic weapon. Bone sword appears in his hand. Swings it. Sword all but shears off Grave's bottom jaw. Ranger tries to get his feet underneath him as he's pulled away. Acrobatics check. Fail. Can I wrap my tail around his leg and trip him? Roll a strength check. Rolls. 15. 
Tiber falls to the ground, and for a moment, Ranger can breathe again. Doesn't last long as Tiber plants a foot on his shoulder and arches his back, tightening the garrote. Fighter swings midnight at Milona. He can't break through her defense. She laughs as she cuts open his leg and then slices his cheek with her scythe. Sorcerer runs forward and places his hand against her stomach. Releases level 2 magic missile. Milana is thrown across the room and into the kitchen. Grave's jaw begins to reform. He stabs Cleric in the chest. The spear itself barely pierces the skin, but the Cleric yells out as force damage breaks a rib. Tries to swing at Rogue. Misses. Rogue shanks him in the side. This is for Corley. He tries to stab him in the leg. Graves catches his hand. Cleric casts Spirit Guardians. The room fills with the sound of the forest. Wind throws paper and tussles hair. Several ethereal bodies begin forming in the air around him. Lizard folk. Family, comrades and friends. The rest of the party recognize the ethereal form of the barbarian amongst their ranks. Cleric stabs with the sword. Nat 20. He rams it into Graves' chest, going all the way through. Graves grabs the blade, staring with pure hatred at the cleric. Ranger tries to dislodge Tiber's foot. Manages to push it off. The pressure immediately lessens. Ranger turns onto his stomach so the rope is on the back of his neck. Tiber climbs on top and wrenches the ranger's arm behind his back. Fighter runs over and slams his foot into Tiber's side. Tiber collapses to the ground, his breath gone. Fighter raises his sword and swings it down at him. Tiber barely manages to roll out of the way. Action surge. He swings again. Tiber manages to roll away again. On his final hit he slams the sword down. Tiber yells out as midnight impales his hand, pinning it to the floor. Milana gets up from the floor of the kitchen and raises her scythe. It glows red hot. She runs forward and swings at the fighter. He jumps back to avoid it, leaving Midnight embedded in Tiber's hand. She reaches forward and catches his arm. Sorcerer shoots which bolt at her. She ducks out of the way. Graves tries to kick the cleric away when one of the spirits rams into him. He lets out a scream of pain as his body is assaulted with radiant energy. He tries to stab his spear forward but misses. Rogue grabs the spear and tries to yank it from his hands. Strength check. Nat 20. Miraculously, this tiny goblin manages to wrench the spear out of Graves' hand. You want this? No more spear for you. He snaps it over his knee. Realizes mistake a millisecond before the explosion of force energy hits him. Rogue is launched across the room and is slammed against the opposite wall. Drops from full HP to 3. Cleric pulls sword out of Graves' chest. Graves falls to his knees. Cleric hits him with guiding bolt second level. Graves screams as radiant damage burns directly into his face. He places his hands on the ground, his face all but unrecognizable. Cleric raises the sword and brings it down, decapitating Graves. Ranger grabs his knife and runs over to Milona, trying to stab her. She avoids both swings. Party doesn't notice as Tiber removes Midnight from his hand. He looks around at the room, seeing the chaos. Picking up Midnight, he sprints for the door. The cleric tries to hit him with a sword, but Tiber avoids the strike and without a second glance back, runs off. Fighter looks around for a weapon. He sees Tiber's loot leaning against the wall. He runs over and grabs it, barely dodging a swing from Melona. He runs back over and slams the loot into her face. It breaks on impact. So does her nose. She turns to him, glaring. Then she looks over at the still body of Graves on the floor. She hisses at the lizard folk and turns. With a smash of glass, she leaps through the window, disappearing into the night. Game. Well guys hope you enjoy today's video. We are going to assume you have if you have stayed to the end. Consider subscribing and clicking the notification bell if you really enjoyed it to stay up to speed with any and all new videos. Also check out the links below to our shop for some fat ass titties and our sponsor Rural and be sure to use the promo code at checkout so they know we sent you and you'll get 10% off. And until next time.